Welcome to the What Matters Marketing Show, hosted by Kim Skilton. This is your place to be inspired, to learn, and to build the business of your dreams with actionable marketing tools, tips, and resources. Kim Skilton is an award-winning marketer who has worked with some of the world's biggest brands. With more than 20 years of industry experience, Kim knows firsthand what it takes to build a business from the ground up. If you love to learn and are ready to take action, you're in the right place. Click follow so you don't miss an episode. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to the What Matters Marketing Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to talk to you about mastering the technical aspects of website development and I'm going to provide you with a seven-point checklist Creating a new website involves more than just its aesthetics and its content. So while the look, feel and overall customer journey are crucial, paying attention to the technical aspects ensures that your website is going to run smoothly and will contribute to your website being more easily discoverable by the search engines. And when I refer to that I'm not referring to SEO that is of course a critical part of your online success however today we're going to dive in or dive under the hood if you like and just like a mechanic checks your engine before a race a technical website checklist ensures your site is well prepared for the digital race so using this checklist will ensure that your website is functional easy to use efficient and effective so let's dive in There are seven website technical requirements on this checklist that I'm going to take you through today. And the first one probably doesn't come as any major surprise, but it is a surprise to me that the number of sites I still come across that are not set up to take advantage of that, this, sorry, is mobile responsive design. Now, if you have a look at your website statistics, I'm very confident you're going to see that a very high percentage of people are viewing your website from their mobile phones. In pretty much uh, every industry in which you operate these days, most consumers are going to visit your website through their mobile phone. So if you don't know that already, then go into your GA4, Google Analytics, and have a look at where the the user device information, it's in there and you will see what percentage are coming to you via mobile desktop, um, tablets, etc. So it is imperative. It's number one is that you look at the mobile responsive design of your website. And we need to look at it not just from, you know, the phone that you're using. Have a look at it across a few different phones and make sure that what you're seeing on your desktop is being optimized for those mobile views as well. And as I mentioned just before, to look at the tablets, are they, you know, are images and words, are they all aligning correctly? So that experience that you're seeing on the desktop is also happening in a mobile environment or do you need to make some tweaks to that? Coming in at number two on the checklist is having an SSL certificate. So securing your website with an SSL certificate is paramount for safeguarding user data and building trust with your audience. It's no longer a nice to have or only something that you would consider if you're an e-commerce site. It is a, it's expected and imperative. So this SSL certificate, it encrypts the data that's transmitted between your web server and the user's browser. And it's protecting sensitive information such as, you know, login credentials and payment details. It also, uh, one huge benefit as a business owner for your website is that with an SSL certificate, these are favored by the search engines, which does then impact on your search rankings. And it impacts positively if you have the SSL certificate. Now, this was made quite a big deal by uh, Google a few years ago now. So if you haven't already implemented an SSL certificate to your website, then you need to do that. And you If you don't even really know what it is, there's obviously a lot of information online. You can have a look. But if you have a look at the beginning of your website, HTTP is how they used to start. However, if you have the uh, security 
the SSL certificate, it will have HTTPS. So that's what you're looking for. If you don't have that on your website, then you need to get that set up immediately. All right, coming at number three on our checklist is your website hosting service. So choosing the right website hosting service is crucial for the performance and reliability of your website. So you want to be looking for a hosting provider that offers fast loading speeds, they've got robust security measures and reliable uptime. Now they should all, anyone you're looking at, if they don't report this information to you, then that would be a red flag. Most uh, credible website hosting services will be uh, very transparent in sharing that information with you. Now, additionally, you want to ensure that the hosting service does include that SSL certificate. So these days, um, you that can be all grouped into one in the past you might have added that on you know it was or, or purchased purchased it elsewhere but today you generally can find that your hosting service provider will enable that SSL certificate into their package as well so in short a great website hosting service will excel at speed security and reliability Okay, number four on our seven-point website technical requirements checklist, it's a mouthful, is redirects. So if you're updating an existing website, meaning you're creating a whole new one, or you might be just updating certain page URLs, then setting up a redirect is, is essential to maintain your SEO rankings and to ensure a seamless user experience. So... To explain this a little bit more, let me give you an example. You might have a current website or a page that might use the um, URL, so www.mywebsite.com forward slash SEO hyphen services, or maybe you're a mower man, yours might be mywebsite.com forward slash uh, lawn hyphen services. But in your new website or in your updated page URL, you might want to change that to mywebsite.com forward slash services forward slash SEO. Or if I use my lawn mower man as an example again, mywebsite.com forward slash services forward slash lawn hyphen mowing. So you need to be aware of what your current URL is and then what you will be changing to. So you can capture those in something as simple as a spreadsheet and then set up those redirects. So the redirects automatically forward users from the old URL to the new one and it prevents them from then encountering a broken link or missing pages. So this practice not only preserves your website's SEO authority, but it will also prevent frustration for users trying to access any outdated content or, you know, where, where, what data that or information that they've been able to find before when they go there. Um, again, if they get a blank page or an error page, that's frustrating and it's going to also drive up your, your bounce rate. So redirects are important for essentially the user experience and to preserve the SEO authority that you may have built over time through that original URL link. All right, the next one is to create and submit an XML sitemap. Now, this serves as a roadmap for search search engines, guiding them to crawl and index all the important pages of your website. So you don't necessarily submit all pages. You might have some pages that are just there that you show people once they're in a you know certain part pathway through your funnel or they're only for maybe you use subcontractors and you will re, uh, direct them to that kind of page if you want them to register their details. But for the general person looking for your website and the content on your site, you might um, not submit that particular link to or add it to your site map. So just make sure that you understand you don't necessarily want every page of your website submitted th- through the site map. So you need to understand which ones you do and which ones you don't. 
And then by creating and submitting that XML sitemap to search engines like your Googles and your Bings, Yahoo's, etc., you can then expedite the indexing process and that's going to improve your website's visibility in those search engines and in the search results. If you're on a website like our WordPress, you can use a tool like Yoast to generate and submit your sitemap, or you can go to, um, on Google, you can go to your um, Google search console and you can easily do it through there as well. Up to number six here on our checklist. So browser capability. Ensure that your website displays and functions seamlessly across different web browsers. So when I talk about different web browsers, I'm referring to, you know, Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, etc. So you want to conduct thorough testing to identify any capability issues and make necessary adjustments to ensure a consistent user experience across all of those browsers. Now, this consistent performance across those browsers is vital for reaching a wider audience and maximizing that user engagement. So it's a bit like the you know, mobile responsive testing. You want to make sure that what you're seeing on one device or in this case on one browser, what you're happy with. So you might be working with a web agency or a web developer and you're checking their, um, when they send you updates, you might be using or checking that through Google Chrome. Make sure you go and use Safari or another, you know, Firefox and make sure that what you're seeing in one browser and that you're happy with is also what you're going to see across those other browsers. All right, and then number seven on our checklist of website requirements is website page load time. So optimizing your website's page load time is crucial for retaining visitors and improving search engine rankings. Slow loading pages can lead to higher bounce rates and, of course, lower user satisfaction. I think we've all had that experience where we might have um, been searching for something and whether we've clicked on an ad or an organic search result and we click on that and we're being taken to a web page and it's taking forever to load. We won't wait. We're not used to waiting anymore and we will bounce off and we will go and click on the next search result. So you need to make sure that you are looking at those and your um, you can have a look again in your Google Analytics for your overall site bounce rate, but then you can also have a look by page for bounce rate and you can then um, prioritize if you've got some high bounce rate. So anything really 70, 80, 90% is high. So you would then, depending on the volume of traffic they're bringing to your website, you can then prioritize which ones you would go in and have a look at. And it could be things like image sizes. So to enhance those page load Um, speed times, look to optimize images, uh, minimize video content, or instead of loading video direct up to the website, you pull it through a URL link and that can be, you might upload your video content to uh, YouTube and then you can do that as public or private content and then you can pull that URL through to your website and embed that web, um, the video content onto the web page so that it's not going to take as much to load that video content. And you want to choose a hosting service that optimizes for speed and reliability. And also just while um, I meant, I'll just mention this while I think of it too, with optimizing images, you can use um, free tools online. So there's tiny PNG, tiny, tiny JPG, and there's a heap of other uh, free um, resources for you to go to as well. But there are ones I use quite often where I will um, upload an image that's too high, too big, and it will reduce it. And depending on the file type, so for websites, we really want to focus on using JPEG images where we can because we can make them quite a bit smaller, whereas PNG files, which are generally more graphic-based files, they will tend to be much bigger. 
So make sure you're not just taking, um, say, uh, an image from a brochure you might have had designed and using that because the chances are that's been optimized for print, which will be a really high resolution image. And you want to make sure that that then gets changed to a lower resolution image that will then be suitable for web and not be huge. Anything, you know, you really want to stay around that 100 KB to 200 KB or even lower if you can for uh, image size. If you're seeing anything in the MB megabyte size, then it's way too big and that is absolutely going to slow your uh, page load time right down. So you could additionally consider implementing techniques like browse caching and content delivery networks, CDNs, they can help uh, improve performance. So a CDN, content delivery network, uh, essentially they're a network of interconnected servers that then speed up the web page loading for data-heavy applications. And that's something that you can check with your website hosting service too to see whether they offer something like that. So where servers are located and how they're spreading your website data across service or not is something you might want to check into when you're choosing your website hosting service. So using the this checklist that I've gone through today, as a roadmap uh, to ensure your website functions seamlessly from a technical perspective is really important. And don't just spend your time looking at how pretty your website is or what content it's got displaying. You need to make sure that, you know, you've got it under the hood and look at those technical requirements as well. Knowing you have these covered, you can then go and look at your, you know, how do I get more traffic or get traffic, get more traffic, depends whether it's a new site launching or you're an existing site and you're updating to a new, entire new website or that you're updating certain pages. You, once you make sure you've covered off this more technical aspects, then it's like, yes, how do we optimize for SEO and look at other traffic generating initiatives such as uh, paid ads, collaborations, etc. So you're welcome to jump over to the What Matters Marketing website. I do have a download of this checklist and you can grab that at any time if you want to have a printable um, PDF for you to have either share with Uh, other team members or for you to have on file for when you're ready to do your website update. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you soon. Thanks for listening to the What Matters Marketing Show. You can support the podcast by hitting follow or leaving a review. For more great marketing information to help build your business and a life that you love, head to whatmattersmarketing.com.